saints. God is a good God. Amen. To our youth this morning, there are many choices that is out there for you. And you need to be sure that you know that you know that you know that you make the right choices. The book of Joshua is actually one of my favorite books in the Bible because it contains a lot of action. Yes, sir. It's this action packed. Yes, sir. You don't even have to go to the movies yeah. um, to, to, to partake in, in all the action that this book has in it. Amen. And really, truth be told, if you, if you search anywhere in the scriptures between Genesis 1 and the, the last book of Revelation, it's all action-packed because it revolves around the Lord. Um, but, the book of, but the book of Joshua just has a lot of action. And uh, it's action on God's part. It's action involving the children of Israel. It's action on God's might. And the action using even one of God's mighty soldiers named Joshua. For those of us that may not know the story of Joshua, I think we have to kind of first start all the way back to the book of Genesis in chapter 12. Uh, when God made a covenant between Abraham and all of his descendants, that Abraham and his descendants would certainly be blessed. Uh, Genesis chapter 13 God told Abraham about the land that he would give to Abraham's seed. Well, Y'all know the story, the land that's flowing with what? Milk and honey. Milk and honey. Amen. We got some Bible scholars in there. Amen. Milk and honey. And he said that he was going to give that land to Abraham's seed. Amen. And all the way through the books of Genesis and Exodus and Deuteronomy and Leviticus and Numbers, all the way up to there, God spoke of the very promised land, Sister, Sister Maria, that he was going to give to the children of Israel. When we get to the book of Joshua, those remaining children of Israel that were still alive finally inherited the land. And they got to the promised land. Amen. They got to the promised land. And for the sake of time and attention, I'm going to spare any additional history lesson on Joshua. But it is a great study if you want to read through it. So let's get into what we got to get going through today. Young people, middle-aged people, some of you mature people. That was a nice way, isn't it? That was a nice way. <laughs> I think I heard somebody say, um. <laughs> Some of you mature people. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, when it comes to religion, there are a vast number of ways as to how you can live your life. And you've got a lot of choices, as you can see, that you can make. There's a lot of choices uh, from Buddhism to Hinduism to Christianity to uh, uh, Muslim to Jehovah's Witness. There's a whole lot of stuff. There's a whole lot of things that you can choose from on how you can live your life. But I want us to make sure, make sure that we know that we know that you are going to make the best choice in your life. Matter of fact, young folks, since it's youth day, you need to make the best choice in your young life. I'm going to say that again. Since it's youth day, young people, some of you looking up this way and some of you not. But since it's youth day, you need to make it your business that you make the best choices in your life. And there are some questions that you may want to dig down into before you travel down the spiritual highway towards disaster. And located right there in Joshua chapter 24, these questions actually exist. And they are, number one, you got to ask yourself if you got a real relationship with God. Now you may ask uh, me the question, where did you see this in the passage of scripture that you read? And I'm glad that it's even on your heart. Because in chapter 24, verses 3 through 13, it points out that God had a relationship with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he had that relationship with the remnants of the children of Israel. And, and because God had established his binding relationship,
relationship with Abraham, Israel had a chance to know God through relationship. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all stay with me now. I want you to stay with me. Israel, because of God's covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and then Joseph, Israel had a unique relationship with God through a covenant experience. Amen. And, and if we fast forward through the books and pages of Genesis and through the books of Exodus, the children of Israel not only heard about God, but they agreed to follow God as he used Moses to lead them out of bondage. Amen. I want you to think about this relationship. God leads the children of Israel out of bondage from Egypt. That's it. God shows them so many different miracles and, 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 and things that he worked out in their lives, such as all the plagues that Egypt had experienced when, when Moses told Pharaoh to let my people go. And then if that wasn't enough, they get to a body of water, Sister Thornton, something that all of us would sink in that rolled back on itself and enabled them to walk through dry land. Y'all act like that wasn't a miracle. I don't know about you, but I have never seen water party. And I have never seen people walk across dry land. I have never seen the water fall back on the enemy that was coming after me. So that's a great time to say praise God. And because they experienced all of that, they had a covenantal relationship with, with God. They had a bonding sister-in-law with God. And God kept them because he established this covenantal relationship that could not, would not be broken. But I've got news for you. You too, young folks, middle-aged folks, and mature folks, you too need a relationship with God. Amen. And just because you attend church every Sunday doesn't mean that you got a relationship with God. Just because you sing in the choir and you sound like an angel doesn't mean that you have a relationship with God. And just because you are musically talented and inclined and so in depth and in depth doesn't mean that you got a relationship with God. Amen. And just because you are worshiping at St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church at 2104 Railroad Avenue or 12th Street Southwest, it James Post Office address, it doesn't mean that you got a relationship with God. Your relationship is based off of your confession and belief that Jesus Christ is Lord. Young people, relationship with God must be established and it must be real and that's only through Jesus Christ. But not only that, I told you it would be quick because it's, it's you Sunday and I might lose some of them. I might lose some of y'all. <laughs> Point number two, you got to ask yourself if you have the fear of the Lord. Uh -huh. You got to ask yourself if you have a fear of the Lord. Joshua instructs the children of Israel in verse 14a that they must have the fear of the Lord. And let's pause for a moment and talk about fear. Uh, fear as we know is an emotion or a response when you feel overcome with anxiety that makes your body nearly shut down from fright. Yeah, yeah. Fear, in, in, in one sense, in the sense that I'm talking about now, is one of the, the devil's greatest tactics. Yeah, it, it's one of the devil's greatest tactics, especially to us Christians. Uh, some of y'all sitting right here wrestle with fear. But that's not the way Joshua wants the children of Israel to experience fear. Uh, Christina and Victoria, uh, the, the, the fear that Joshua and, is talking about for the children of Israel is a deep respect and admiration for God. Uh, it, it's a deep reverence, if you will, Deacon Pizel, because God is to be respected because he's all-powerful, he is majestic, and he's mighty. Amen. Thank, thank all three of y'all. He is all powerful. <laughs> he is majestic. And he's mighty. 
That's the kind of fear that Joshua is trying to get the children of Israel to understand. And let me let me just bring it to let me just bring it to our standards. Okay. Joshua said, "Look at here. Yeah. I'm about to die soon, right. but whatever you do, yeah. I want you to always." Like that, TJ. I want you to always, <laughs> I want you to always respect Hallelujah. and reverence Almighty God. Hallelujah. That's what Joshua said. Look at him. Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. Pull your bootstraps up. Yeah. I want you to know about this thing. I want you to always give God His promise. Yeah. That's what I want you to do. I want you to give God His respect, do I want you to give God His rightful place in your life. And, 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 and that's the kind of, of fear and respect that Joshua is trying to get the children of Israel to understand. Because here's what I found out, deep green. When you give God that kind of fear, God gives you some kind of faith. That's good. That's good. When you give God that kind of fear and that kind of respect, he can take you from a bad boy to a reasonable record. That's what I'm talking about. And he can take you from, from starting at the low and then from stopping some shells down at Seminole Mall when I used to my first in college Sister Thornton for five years and then take you to a place where you're at now. When you look back, you think about it. And you say, how in the world did I got here? You know that it's the fear of the Lord. It's that deep reverence and respect to the Lord. So God is saying, Joshua is saying, I'm saying, look at him. Give God his sin. Number three, you got to ask yourself, if you're serving the Lord, look at 14b. Joshua encourages the children of Israel to serve God in sincerity and in truth. That's deep right there. That's deep right there. He says, I, I, I want you to have a relationship, Rabbi, with God that is so unique that nobody can shake you from the relationship that you got with God. Amen. That's how sincere it is, Maria. Amen. It, it's a relationship, Sister Lucy, that, that, is, that is so unique and so special that you hold it right here. You, you covet that relationship with God. And come hell or high water or high water in hell, you don't want to let go of that relationship with God. Amen. You want to hold on to your good thing. Because the good thing found the paper in you to be a good thing. But I've got news for you, little children. Just because you come to church doesn't cover it. Just because you attend church every Sunday doesn't cover it. Just because you sing in the choir and you got the voice of an angel doesn't mean that you serve God either. Yeah. And just because you come to St. Mary Share Baptist Church at 2104 Railroad <laughs> Avenue or 12th Street Southwest, that's what the post office address says, it doesn't mean that you serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. But what it does mean is that you just showed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're on the usher board, serving on the usher board is Brother Haiti doing today, it does not mean that you actually serve the Lord. Now, somebody just asked me, why, preacher? Why, why preacher? Somebody just asked me, why, preacher? Why, why preacher? I'm glad y'all asked. Because sometimes <laughs> you may wind up serving yourself better than you serve others. Ah. And if you're serving yourself, Victor, better than you are serving others, it kind of means that you got some pride in there, and that pride means that you can't serve God. That pride means that you can't serve him how you're supposed to serve him. So, so Joshua, old Joshua, he, he says to the children of Israel, um, here we go again, I'm changing and flip this thing around. He says, all right now, all right. stop tripping. <laughs> <laughs> don't be tripping. Um, and, and don't be acting like, or acting like, um, you serving God when you're really not. Um, he, said, he said, I need you. I need you, Auntie. I need you to stop tripping. Yeah. Don't be acting like you're trying to serve God and you ain't doing it in sincerity and in truth. Yeah. Um, because these days, my brothers and sisters, there are a lot of actors and actresses. 
In verse 15, Joshua gives us both a day and a declaration. I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to miss this. Joshua gives us, Sister Tegel, a dare and a declaration because Joshua says, if it seems evil unto you, Felicia, to serve the Lord, in other words, if serving our one-of-a-kind God doesn't seem right to you or it doesn't seem fair, there's got to be other options. Joshua says, then choose to you this day who you will serve, whether it will be the little G gods which your father messed around with uh, on the other side of the floods right. or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Right. In other words, Joshua challenges them. He says, you got to choose, Sister Green, uh, this day. I don't want you to think about it tomorrow. I want you to think about it now. I want you to think about it now, Sister Smith. Um, choose you this day um, who you going to be able to serve. And after he dared them to choose, my mama used to say a devil dog there. She used to say a devil dog there. She said, well, you got a devil dog there, you had to do it. But Sister Thornton, I learned that when you're in New York City, when you're up, up north, they got what they call a triple dog there. And, and if you got a devil dog there, that's bad. But when you got a triple dog there, Sister Gordon, it's even worse than that because she used to say, honey, you had to do it. <laughs> and so what I like about this is Joshua throws out the dare, but then he backs it up with a declaration. Uh -huh. He said, if you don't do all that, <laughs> you can do all that you want to. But as for me, oh, you missed it, you missed it, you missed it, you missed it. Joshua, let me go back. He says, I will give you a dare, and then I will give you a declaration. Uh, because the dare is for you, but the declaration is for me. And not only is it for me, the declaration is for me and my house. Oh, y'all just missed this part. He says, he says, y'all can do what you want. You can try all these other gods. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In other words, God was saying, I don't need anybody else. Because there is pop, no substitute for the God I serve. There is only one God that's worthy to be praised. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He is Jehovah Nisi. Oh yeah, he reigns in victory. He is Jehovah Salome. He's all those Jehovah Rock. He is all those, and that's what I need. You can have the other stuff, but I need the God that's gonna take care of me. And, and Joshua says, I don't wanna find my satisfaction in a drug. I don't want to find my satisfaction in a bottle. I don't want to find it, young people, in sex or video games. I don't even want to find it in a man or a woman. But as for me, my house and me, we will serve the Lord. And while working on this Sunday, I was reminded of a song by Sister Trudy Cloud that she used to sing when we was growing up that makes me think about my choice to serve the Lord. And it goes like this. God has done so much for me.
what she said. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. And I'm gonna be on that battlefield. Young people, middle-aged people, mature people, all young people. There are many choices and many religions. There are many gods, but I choose. As for me and my house, as for me and my house,
Joshua says, stand in your faith like it does here in, in 1 Peter. He says, stand in your faith, stand firm. Yes, yes. And make a decision that as for you and your house, you will serve the Lord. You got a choice. And the choice is up to you. 